As we grow in our careers and make more money throughout our lives, there's a trap waiting for us at every corner. This trap follows you everywhere you go. It makes its way into your conversations, it predicts your next move, it knows what you eat, where you live, and it does everything in its power to keep you broke, all without you realizing it. I know that sounds about creepy and by now you're probably wondering, what trap are you talking about? Lifestyle creep. That's the trap I'm talking about, and the reason it follows you everywhere you go is because it's an extension of you, which is also why it doesn't feel like a trap at all. But despite how it feels, lifestyle creep is the biggest money trap of them all, and it's gotten to the point where lifestyle creep turns our own behaviors against us, which is why when it comes to money, you are your own worst enemy. But that's okay. By the end of this video, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And here I show you how to save money, how to increase your income and better yourself every single day. Let's get into this. Now, if you've never heard of lifestyle creep before, I'm gonna tell you what it is real quick. So it's basically when you adjust your lifestyle to match your income. And when you do that, it creates a world where it looks like you're really successful and you're doing well for yourself, but you're actually just in the same exact financial situation as you were before. So let me paint a picture for you. Have you ever gotten a pay increase, any pay increase whatsoever from your parents giving you more money for your allowance when you're a kid, all the way up to getting promotions at work? Or maybe you've even made money on the side in addition to what I just said, but what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you realize you just made some extra money? Because if you're anything like me, you instantly start thinking about what you can afford to do now that you weren't able to do before. And that's a completely normal way of thinking. There's nothing wrong with exploring the ideas of what you can do now that you're making extra money. Now, what hurts you is when you immediately act on these ideas without even thinking anything through. And no, doing a quick calculation saying, hmm, if I crunch these numbers, if I carry the two and drive around the lot long enough so I can justify buying the car that I don't even need is not thinking things through. The fact that you even had to think the hard, the fact that you had to do mental acrobatics, got your brain out here doing backflips, just so you can justify buying something tells me that even you know in the back of your mind, you don't got no business buying this car. And that's where this whole lifestyle thing becomes a double-edged sword because my frustration has always been, well, at what point do I get to upgrade my lifestyle? Like, I work for this money. This is my money that I earned. I deserve to be able to spend it however I want to. I deserve this, right? See, now I have to share a story with you about my relationship with money so I can really bring this home because this gets deep. When I made my first dollar ever, I was like, huh, this is kind of nice. And when I started making $10 an hour, I was like, oh, cool. So I'm basically rich now. But once I started making $19 an hour, you couldn't tell me nothing. And when I started making over $30 an hour, oh, I was balling out of control. There was no stopping me. I went off the deep end. No exaggeration. I was like, I'm going to give back to my family. We're all going to go out to Olive Garden. Everybody get over here right now. Get whatever you want off the menu. It's all on me. I'm going to buy my mom a house. I just had all these crazy ideas of what I was going to do once I was more established. Until I realized, even though I was making good money, I had nowhere near the amount of money I would need to do everything that I wanted to do. Which meant either A, I needed to lower my expectations, or B, I needed to improve myself so I could change my reality. For me, it started with allowance money where I knew I would get $10 every two weeks. And my parents didn't care how I spent it, but one thing was for sure. If I spent it all at once, I had to wait till the next time I got my allowance. That's that old school. Let me stop playing before y'all light me up in the comments. I'm some. Back in my day, we didn't have no allowance. I allow you to live in my house. Hey, look, we ain't got time for all that over here. That gave me some discipline early on when it came to saving money, but when I realized I didn't necessarily have to wait on my parents to pay me, I started my own side hustles, whether that was cutting grass for neighbors and family members or helping family members with their side hustles. That right there is where I messed up, not because I made more money, but because I decided to make more money for the wrong reason. Instead of just sticking with something consistently, my thought process was, I'm going to cut grass, I'm going to charge everybody $20 to do the front and the back, because you know I was a kid, you know what I'm saying, I had to prove myself before I could charge them any more than that. And I told myself, after I get enough money to get what I want, I'm going to stop cutting grass and just wait on my allowance. Y'all remember when those little handheld game systems came out, the PlayStation Portables, this thing right here? 
Yeah, when they first came out, they were $250. And the moment I stayed up enough to get one, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to stop cutting grass. And that was until the next thing I wanted, which the next thing ended up being the Nintendo DS. I had to have been like nine at the time. And you know what? I did all that planning. I did all that work to get the game systems. But you know what I didn't have to go with them? Games. Yeah. Turns out they sell games separately. Can you believe that? Somehow, my nine-year-old brain didn't grasp that. Had your boy looking right sad. And if it wasn't for my aunt taking pity on me and buying me a Spider-Man game, I would have just been in my room stuck with the game system that I couldn't even play. Now, that just sounds like a harmless, funny little story, right? But it's that exact way of thinking that I had when I was nine years old that creates the worst type of lifestyle creep there is. The same kind that holds you back for the rest of your life. Think about the fact that I didn't have any bills or responsibilities. And think about the fact that someone actually came to my rescue so I wouldn't be some bored kid stuck in his room not being able to play his new game system. Now put that same person in the shoes of a 26 year old who just got his first real job that pays $70,000 a year. Before that, he was in between part-time jobs while he went to school to work on his master's. So he's used to making $10 an hour, but now he makes a little over $30 an hour. We'll call him Robert, all right? So let's say Robert is just like me. He's a sneakerhead. He's heavy in the shoes. He's into cars. He likes to have nice things, but he says he wants to build wealth. And most importantly, he wants to give back to his family. He has a car, but not the nicest car. It's just a basic, safe car that gets him from point A to point B. And it's already paid for. But you know, Robert's starting to feel himself a little bit. He's like, you know what? I'm start I'm making all this money now. Let me go ahead and get myself an upgrade. You know what I'm saying? So he does. He goes to the dealership and he buys himself an oversized gas guzzling truck just because he can. He uses the cash from selling his old car for the down payment on the truck, and that's how he justifies getting the truck. Only now, he has to pay $600 a month for this truck. Keep in mind, that's $600 a month more that he has to pay now. But Robert's on top of the world. He's not worried about that. Just got a fat pay increase, and he got a brand new truck. Can't tell him nothing. Then you know what? Robert says, forget this dusty one bedroom apartment I'm living in. I'm going to get myself a big two bedroom townhouse with two and a half bathrooms with a garage and a backyard. His rent now goes from $700 a month to $1,300 a month. So basically he just doubled his rent in a matter of days. So just for a quick reference, whenever you make $70,000 a year, you only really take home $2,100 per paycheck. So let's say our boy Robert here gets paid twice per month. That's almost a full paycheck gone just off of those two expenses alone. Not to mention groceries, utilities, that expensive behind gas for that gas guzzling truck he just bought. Not to mention the fact that he had to pay a $300 security deposit for that newly acquired townhome. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Your boy Robert didn't think about that. All he saw was the pay increase. All he saw was the money. You know what else Robert didn't think about? He didn't think about the fact that car insurance goes up now because now he has to insure a newer vehicle that would cost way more to repair in the event of a car accident. But he thought about things the same way I did when I was nine. What's the problem? He didn't think anything through. He just saw money, then he saw a few shiny objects, and he went for those shiny objects, only he's not a kid. He's a grown man who has to face grown man consequences. Ladies watching this, the same goes for you. So if Robert moves into his new townhouse with all that space, not realizing he has no furniture for those extra rooms and it's completely useless to own that space without any furniture because you ain't just going to be sitting there with no empty furniture, whose fault is that? If a tire on Robert's brand new truck goes flat and he doesn't have a replacement or the money to replace the tire, whose responsibility is that? Now let me ask you this. If you get behind on your payments, who's going to come to your rescue? Because I'm going to tell you something that's real. Ain't nobody going to take pity on you. And even if they do help you out, nine times out of ten, they're going to expect you to pay them back. Because that's just how life works. And here's how I know Robert's headed straight for trouble. I was a robber who just so happened to come to my senses before it was too late. I went for the townhouse with the two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. I chose that over the single bedroom apartment paying all that money knowing good and well I didn't even go to every single room half the time. There would be weeks I didn't go into certain rooms just throwing money away just... 
So let's fast forward a little bit so I can further explain what can and will happen to Robert. So now he's been working his job for a good three months and his wallet is starting to fill it a little bit. He's like, man, I'm paying an awful lot for this townhouse. And he's realizing that he's missing the money that he could have been saving if he would have just lived in his one bedroom apartment, you know, the dusty one. Not to mention the fact he feels like if I'm paying all this money for this townhouse, why can I still hear everything that goes on next door? everything. If the neighbor so much as sneezes, Robert's going to know about it. But anyway, despite the fact that he's starting to feel the pressure of his past decisions, he still can't help but pick up the newest pair of Nikes or Jordans every now and then. By the way, those are the shoes I used to go for no matter what my bank account looked like, so I'm not even judging Robert. Because at the end of the day, it's Robert's money and he can do whatever he wants with it. But this month, it's a new pair of Jordans. Next month, it might be a new muffler for his truck. Oh, and don't let his job give him a bonus. He might mess around and get his truck lifted, or even worse, he might go out and get a new truck altogether. Mr. Robert here is not used to having money, so he impulsively wants these things. And that was a bit of an exaggeration, but here's something more realistic. Robert gets a $2,000 bonus, so out of his excitement, he talks to his friends about what he's going to buy next. Robert goes home and he's just chilling because tomorrow's Saturday and he has Saturdays off just like most normal human beings. So he's just chilling back at the townhouse just scrolling through Instagram. And next thing you know, an ad pops up for the exact thing that he was telling his friend he was going to buy, which in this case were new rims for his truck. But these aren't just any rims. These rims are much bigger than the ones that are already on his truck, but they're also on sale for $500 a piece. No problem, he can just use his bonus to pay for it, right? I mean, so what if I have to pay like $20 out of pocket? I mean, that's no big deal, right? Good old Robert Dunn forgot that if you get bigger rims for a car, you need to buy bigger tires, which happen to be more expensive than smaller tires. He still goes through with it though because he just really feels strongly about the Instagram ad he saw. He was like, you know what? This is a godsend. These rims are on sale. These are meant for me. There he goes justifying again, but this purchase almost completely wipes Robert's bank account completely clean. I'm talking about this right here. He's left with $200 in his checking account and $700 in his savings. He really isn't sweating it though because he feels like he can recover. I mean, the whole reason he never buckled down and got serious about his money in the first place is because he was able to still save $400 at the end of the month easily without even trying. And he knew that if he really got down to it, he could save a good $600 a month. And because he wasn't living paycheck to paycheck, he ironically started behaving in such a way that creates the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. But here's where things take a turn for the worse. Y'all know how sometimes your jobs won't give you a raise for like years in a row, even though everything else, all the other prices are going up. I'm talking about gas, rent, groceries, all that good stuff. All those prices are going up, so your pay can't even keep up with normal inflation. Well, that happened to Robert, and now he's having trouble saving his money. But here's the worst part. Remember when I said most importantly and above all else, he wants to give back to his family? Well, his mom just called. She says she's fallen on hard times. She just lost her job and she has just enough saved to get by for six months. But while she's in between looking for jobs, she could really use his help. The only thing is she's on month three of being unemployed and she didn't want to tell him at first because she didn't want him to worry and she didn't want to ask him for money. Does that sound like anyone's mom? Let me know in the comments. Parents be doing that. I think parents wait way too long before telling us certain things because they don't want us to worry, only to tell us way after the fact, and then we really worry, thinking they grown or something. Anyways, Robert's mom needs $1,500 just to stay afloat for one extra month. Now, how do you think Robert's going to get that $1,500? Because he definitely doesn't have it. And the moral of the story is you can spend your money however you want to. That's the freedom you get as a grown man or woman. But that freedom comes with responsibility. So it's always important to make sure that your goals line up with what you're actually doing. Because Robert's goals didn't match what he did. He said he wanted to get back to his family, but he ended up spending money on BS he didn't need. And don't get me wrong, it's his money and it's his right to spend it as he pleases. But I guarantee you we all know Robert who can't get ahead financially even though he makes good money. Everybody knows a Robert who has family who needs help financially, but he can't do a thing for them because of his decision. The purpose of this video isn't to guilt trip you. It's to show you that your priorities need to match your actions. Or you can end up like your boy Robert who now has some very tough decisions to make. He can't even get his own finances together. Now he's supposed to help somebody else? That's how two people end up broke. All because of lifestyle creep. At first it seemed harmless, right? But that's how it earned its name. It just creeps up on you and when you least expect it, boom, I got you. Now you're stuck. 
you got to improve. You got to understand when it's okay to upgrade your lifestyle in such a way that it doesn't hurt your finances. You got to turn off that switch in your brain that says, oh, I'm making all this money. Because if you can't afford to miss a paycheck, you're not where you need to be financially. Take it from someone who was a robber. And this is the last thing I'm going to say because I know you got to go. Lifestyle creeps come in the form of more than just bills, but also convenience. Think about McDonald's, Starbucks, Apple products, things that make life easier. It's very easy to spend hundreds of dollars on everything I just listed. You'll see folks buying things like burgers, fries, sodas, technology, all in the name of making their lives easier. But those things are gone in the blink of an eye. How many of those same people own Apple, McDonald's, Starbucks stocks that actually go up in value over time? Priorities. See, lifestyle creep will have you think that things like stocks are expensive, risky, and just an overall waste of money. But in the same breath, it'll urge you to buy things that cost around the same amount just to give an illusion of a successful life. By the way, I just made a video on this topic which makes investing super easy to understand. You can check it out up here. So what would I do if I were Robert knowing what I know now? Once I got the $70,000 job, I would stay in my dusty one bedroom apartment just long enough so I could find a decently priced, more upscale one bedroom apartment. Sure, it would be more expensive, but it would only be like a couple hundred dollars more expensive at the very most. So instead of doubling my rent, I would only slightly increase my rent. I would keep my car since it's already paid for, and I would keep most of my expenses exactly the same because that's money I wouldn't be missing anyways because I was already spending that money anyways when I was making a lower amount of money. And once I got more comfortable with my money and got into a really good rhythm with my savings, I would start sending money to my mom every month, and I would add additional money to my savings account every month. I'd figure out useful places to put my money so it's not just all sitting in one place, not growing. By the way, I have a video coming out on that in just a couple of days. I'll link it up here whenever it comes out. I'd also look into investing, but all in all, I would just improve. I would look at how much I spent last month and I'd be like, man, you know, I can do better than that. Let's see how much I can save next month. See, look, this is where you messed up at. You bought too many shoes last month. You know, it's all good, but how are you going to recover from that this month? I would give myself that positive self-talk, and I guarantee you if Robert would have taken that approach, he would have been able to give his mom $1,500 on the spot. He might even gave her $2,000. The only difference between the Robert who messed up and the Robert who did the right thing is the fact that the Robert who did the right thing understood that he could still enjoy his life and buy stuff that he wants sometimes, but he also understands that he needs to give himself boundaries if he's gonna reach his financial goals. And most importantly, he didn't just go out buying expensive stuff just because he could. The whole purpose of this video is to feel empowered to spend money as you please while also keeping your goals in mind. Because if you do those two things, you won't make the same mistakes Robert did. Anyway, this is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.